nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed, make me sound like a chipmunk, and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. Hello, hello. My camera is usually right there. It's over here. How's it going? All right, so um, I know it's not a usual live stream week for me, but you guys know I got these new attachments for the cover stitch machine for binding, and I just thought I would set them up with you. So it's gonna be a very casual stream. Um, and while I know a lot about <clears throat> What is that? Well, I know a lot about using a binding attachment. Um, I've never used this company's, and so I just thought it would be, I don't know, fun to troubleshoot it. I haven't even like opened the package yet. So you're gonna see it from literally like nothing to hopefully binding. So how are you all? <laughs> so yeah, if you're watching this on the replay, it. I don't really know how it's gonna go. I think it's gonna go really well, honestly. Um, but expect more sewing with knits and using cover stitch binding and stuff. So it's, uh, you can just like fast forward through the highlights. <laughs> Hi, Hannah. Hi, Blue Magilla. Hey, Ann. Hey, Malin. We're using binding attachments from Malin's home country, Sweden. Hey, Barbara. Hey, Sue. Oh, no, Sue. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you have a thorough and speedy recovery. Hey, Aisha, how's it going? Yeah, get well soon. All right, so this is my cover stitch is a very simple cover stitch. I got a Juki MCS 1500. Hopefully this camera angle will work for you. Live translations on me, <laughs> oh good. <laughs> I do have two sets of instructions, one's in Swedish. Um, and the company I bought these from is, this is the name of it. It's Erica Siskrin. I don't know how you would say this, but this is the company I bought these from. Now, upon reflection, I actually am starting to think that any binding attachment will work with any machine. I think coming at it from the production side of things and working on industrial machines and factories, I think I was under the impression you had to have the attachment with the machine. The tricky part with an attachment is not attaching it. Oh, it means er it means sewing box. That's adorable. Erica's sewing box. That's cute. So when you think of it that way, you can use a lot of attachments if you don't need it to integrate with your feed dogs or your presser foot. Um, or attached to the machine. I don't know of many other attachments that you can do that with, with a bind other than a binding attachment that's gonna like be common, like something you're gonna use, you know, get regular use of. <clears throat> so one of the things that I worried about after I got this was, I don't have much space here to <laughs> attach anything. So let me show you what I got. The, what I'm interested in, besides being just kind of a binding nerd, I'll admit it, I'm kind of into binding and I know probably a little more so than anyone really needs to be, 
but I just really enjoy it. I think it's a nice finish and we see it on everything we use, right? So it's a very common finish technique. So um, let's see here, this is, so I got two. I got a 35 millimeter, which is a, about one and three eighths inch cut binding um, that does not tell you the finish width. Um, usually when you buy a binding attachment, it's the width that they're telling you. This one's 48 millimeter, this one's 35 millimeter. What they're telling you is the um, width of the fabric you need to feed into the machine. Hey Regina, how's it going? So I know like one of the only metric things I know of is 35 millimeters because I use that binding with so much. Okay, proof I have not opened this, huh? Let's see. I opened this one, I think. I, I feel like I touched one of them, maybe not. It feels really nice, like the quality. Sorry, it's such a crinkly package. Very nice, you can see her company is right there in it, so you can tell they made it. Um, so my idea, this one's a double fold, and so this one's a single fold. So let me, let me open this so I can show you how you can tell the difference when you're looking at it. Okay, I haven't taken them out, either one out of the package, okay. So do you see how this has this little um, lip right here? That's the folding part. So this one's a single fold because there's only one of these and this one's a double fold because there's one on top and on bottom, right? So the binding goes in here. What's interesting is I think this, oh yeah, okay. That makes sense. You're gonna swing this out. This helps feed the binding and you, at least you can kind of adjust it a little bit. I'm just looking to see if there's other adjustments because I've used binding attachments that do have adjustments on them, but they were mounted to the machine. And here's this one. So maybe I, so you want this right here to be um, right in front of your needles right there. And it's gonna make a 90 degree turn. That's what I'm nervous about. Is it making the 90 degree turn? Because in general, trying to think how mine was. I guess mine did make a 90 degree turn. All right, so here's the other thing I've been thinking about is I have a, I happen to have a table at home that um, will allow you to put a sewing machine in it and it has a um, bed that the machine sits on that is adjustable height so that you can put the bed of your machine um, flush with the table surface, which is really nice. However, there's a hole that the machine fits into, into this, you know, onto that little table, that adjustable height table. And just because the bed of your machine is, is the same height as the rest of your table, it doesn't mean that there's not a hole around it, right? There's like a, it's just like a, like a generic sized hole. So I feel like this, my plan is I'm hoping that this just works. I can mount this on here. It feels good. I can do that. Um, if not, I'll probably bring that table to work because it's not being used. It's just in a closet right now. It's kind of a chunk. Um, it is a really cool table because you can like fold it up and it just looks like a cabinet. Um, and that adjust, you could just put your machine, like lower it and then just close it all up and no one can even tell it's a sewing machine. It's pretty cool. <laughs> um, and I bought it with my home sewing machine, so it works perfect. And I have a plastic, it's plastic I would call it, shape that fills in that hole around so you have a nice like smooth surface continuous surface so oh yeah oh yeah blue Magilla. that you should try that for sure hi julie how's it going all right so let's just play around with it so i got the 48 millimeter double fold which is pretty wide i've never used a binding attachment that wide so that will will double fold means <clears throat> that it'll be folded and clean finished on the top and the bottom. Single fold means that it'll only fold once on the top and on the bottom there's a raw edge. But because we're using this with the cover stitch machine, the cover stitch looper is going to clean finish that raw edge. That's your hope. And you guarantee um, you, will, you have something in your closet, many things in your closet that have this finish. Oh really, Sue? 
Uh, you know, they're not that hard to find. I think the tricky part is knowing if it's going to work with your machine or not. Hey, Terry. So the one I have for my industrial machine, I got from WayWAC and I have it linked, I think, on my website as well. So you can find the exact thing I'm using on my machine. And it screws into the bed of my machine right here. There's This is a little circle with two screw holes that are just, they're like a receptacle for a screw. And that, that thing works great. Oh, that's, oh, that's cool, Terry. Terry's like a, an aficionado of vintage machines. <laughs> um, I love that thing. It works really good. And I love it because you don't have to change out your throat plate or your feed dogs um, or permanently attach it, and where, which is the only other kind I've used. So th the whole world of so home binding attachments is somewhat new to me. So, and I've never used one on a cover stitch machine. So, all right, so let's set up the single fold one first. And so she gives you a little sample of fabric. This looks like a, an interlock. Yeah, that's an interlock. So you got, I got two widths, right? So let's set this one aside. She gives you ticky tacky. Wait, what is this called? Putty, this is, uh, she gives you a little putty to attach it to your machine. She also sells something if you want to replace your throat plate um, and, it, and it attaches to the throat plate and then you can mount it to your machine really nicely. So, hey, Kara, did I say hi just now? I didn't think I did. I thought about it. All right, uh, here's the two rolls I bought for each. I bought two in the wider width. This stuff, honestly, is a menace. These little, the blue, the little, I call these berries. You know when a fabric has like little little um, flecks that fall off of it? I always call those berries, like terry cloth berries. You get what, you get what I mean? It, there's blue dots all over this pink one. This is all over my ironing board because they were just sitting there. And then I got some narrower stuff. So when it, if it's gonna, if you're gonna order something from, from a long way away, this is Sweden to California, you might as well get anything that you're interested in so you only have to pay the shipping once, right? And if you're doing binding and someone offers pre-cut binding, I can't recommend that enough. Like that was the difference when I set one up on my industrial machine. I got a binding, I got an industrial machine set up with the binding attachment and it was delivered to me. So it came that way, right? And it was exactly the same kind of machine I'd always used, just had a binding attachment. So it had like a, a different feed dog and a different throat plate and it was permanently attached to it. Um, and I couldn't get it to like, do the binding very nicely and I just couldn't get the knack of it. And I was hand cutting my binding. And then I had a mechanic come to tune up our machines and I just said, hey, do you mind like looking at that and showing me like, what am I doing wrong? And he got it, it was, I was it's just like a knack, right? And once you get the knack, it's like e easy peasy. But the thing I learned with that was buying pre-made binding made this massive difference. Like it just made it the difference between using it and not using it. Like it was that drastic. And then af after a while, we became a pro at that machine. We would hand cut our binding and we would know what it wouldn't like and what it would like. We knew how it would act with different fabrics, like spoon flower printed fabrics. It kind of um, was hard to pull the fabric through. It didn't matter how thin it was. There was something about the surface of that fabric that really grabbed the machine. In fact, I sewed myself the worst I've ever sewn myself trying to pull that binding through. And um, cotton lawn from like art gallery was really fiddly. It was so lightweight, it would torque. Um, but like a quilting cotton, really nice. I'm trying to think what was the other one that we used. We used like four different ones because every company has a different quilting cotton. So order the pre-cut just to get yourself going, you know. Hi, Diane, how's it going? Yeah, I know, right, Terry, exactly. Yeah, a sixteenth of an inch off, exactly. Yeah, so I did cut some binding today just because I feel pretty confident um, just to practice with. We'll see. Let's just try it. Um, I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna test my cover stitch and make sure it's gonna go through like multiple layers of fabric. So I cut a bunch of stuff. I'm very ambitious. I even cut a uh, camisole to sew today <laughs> because I'm also determined, so. All right, we're gonna just cut a chunk of this. This was just, you know, cut for this purpose. I'm gonna do, let's see. So if it was a single fold 
finding you'd have one, two, three, four layers of fabric that your cover stitch needs to go through really nicely because you're gonna have the garment, which is usually one layer, maybe two, and then you have the binding um, going, um, folding under on top, coming back on itself, that's two more, and then going under and being raw, so that's one. So one, two, three, four, that's four layers. So let's see how my cover stitch looks, because I just set it up. I'm actually thinking the, I want the needles further apart too. I'm gonna loosen the tension of the presser foot. You see these wrinkles I'm getting right here? We can bring you in closer. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of, see this right here? So if I lift up my presser foot, it kind of releases it. go. I can never figure out where the sweet spot is to pull it out. It's a little heavy. I think um, I'm going to change the needle width though. Hi Heidi. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, right Aisha? Exactly. How did I loosen that? Oh, can you not see that? You can't, can you? Right here on top of my cover stitch there's a screw and it says HML. And so um, I'm thinking <laughs> what those HML stands for is, you know, basically if you really want a lot of tension, you crank it down. Cause that's the same on my industrial machine. Usually if you have a screw like this going straight down at the top, this is gonna adjust the pressure of your presser foot on any, on any machine. Not all machines have, like my home or Nina doesn't have that but there is another way to adjust the pressure on the right-hand side of the machine by the power switch. So high, medium, low. Really? That's so strange. That's a strange way to phrase that. Heavy, maybe heavy, medium, light. That sounds more in, yeah, heavy, medium, light. Yeah, that sounds better. Heavy, medium, light, yeah. as in fabric types, uh, as in pressure. <clears throat> so heavy pressure, medium pressure, or light pressure makes sense to me. Doesn't matter on the fabric type. I don't know, Terry, because I think that um, if you ever watch that video where I, I race my, I can't adjust this, um, I lost the screw at the one of the spots of this camera. Um, if you ever watch that video where I race my machines against one another, I race my current industrial, my former industrial that doesn't have electronics, and then my home sewing machine, I sew the exact same thing um, on each of them. What I realized in that moment was what I miss, like on the, I knew this, on the home sewing machine, the thing I miss the most is the pressure of the presser foot. <laughs> All right, so let's look at this. So. I'm gonna change just the um, width of the needle and I can't rem remember now. We moved, I moved everything over here, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't, can't remember. Yeah, I did, there it is. I have a Jersey needle in there too. I need this little doohickey. So we're just gonna move our needle over. I want a wider uh, width for my top stitching. Did I just unthread my needle? <laughs> Why did I do that? Always tighten up the screw that doesn't have a needle. You don't want to lose that screw. It's a really weird screw. And um, you will never find it again. I actually, my threading is through the right-hand side. <laughs> God, I wish you could raise this needle up a little bit more. How many of you, I'm gonna ask this in the guild, how many of you thread your needle with your dominant hand? Like if you're right-handed, do you thread your needle with your right hand? 
No, you didn't miss anything, Chantel. I mean, I'm just kind of going over it. Does it have more pressure or less pressure? Uh, do you mean like what I just did? I just loosened it when I was adjusting that. So I made less pressure. Oh, I definitely don't want to lose my screwdriver. I thought I Okay. All right, let's check that out, this pressure. So I'm going to, not that one, lo loosen this. And I think I'm gonna, I don't understand this symbol back here. I'm gonna change that to 1.5. <laughs> Oh, interesting. You guys use your dominant hand? No, home machine, press your foot, press your foot, wait. Oh, cool, Sanwi, that's awesome. <laughs> that spinner thing is really cool. And, um, and what they are talking about is, because I have something like that on my industrial, but do you see this little wood I've shown you guys this so this is from a yarn bar yarn ball holder and it and it like has like a post and then you set your yarn ball on there and then it spins as you knit that's the whole idea behind this I never used it for that it didn't work that great for that and um but one time we got this binding roll in like when we had it sent we sent our fabric out and it came back cut the binding roll was like this big it was huge oh I can show it to you So look at this. This is the um, size of the binding that we got. It's massive. Look at that, I can barely fit it on the camera. Um, and um, it was bumping up against the cords of the back of my machine. And so it would pull, like, right? It wouldn't feed, it would do this thing where it would stretch. And so we needed to like get it on something that it would glide really, really well. Where do you send, well, you can't really do it for a home application unless you want like, I think the minimum is like 30 yards of fabric, not binding. <laughs> you can buy some at my, on my website though. Not knit though, I don't have knit. All right, okay, let's just check this out here. I'm gonna go this way now. Okay, that's what I want. Yeah, so that little spinny attachment they bought is really nice to hold your binding and so the binding will feed really nicely, right? Okay, so this is what I'm going for. So I tried this adjustment here. I couldn't understand what it was. It looks like zigzags. Like one has three zigzags and one has two zigzags. And so I think that this is the length. And so I just lengthened the stitch. So this is what I'm gonna go with. I think this looks good. That looks way better, don't you think? All right, let's 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 get this thing on here. Um, ticky tacky. Ooh, those are soft ticky tacky. So I'm thinking that First, let's put our binding in here and see. We could use theirs. Let's try theirs. What kind of machine do you have? Am I saying your name right, Sanwi? Or is it Shanwi? Um, what kind of machine do you have? You're using a cover stitch, I imagine, too. All right, so I'm just going to thread this through here and... It's kind of hard to do when it's not attached to a machine yet. But I want to see where it's coming out. Oh my gosh. This is so much harder when it's not attached. <laughs> this metal is very grippy too. Interesting. Okay. gonna yoink it through get it going ribbing is so much thicker than anything I've ever used before all right okay
That looks pretty good. Okay, so if that were to sew, we would want that about right there. Ooh, I'm getting kind of nervous. Yeah, I'm excited too. Just gonna put this putty on here. I'm trying to put it so where I know it's gonna touch this attachment, but maybe over here. Okay, so let's get this. So one thing I learned when you're threading the binding attachment is, is really push it like this, push it in there like that to get it seated so that you can start pulling and seeing, okay, is it is it um, folding and doing its thing, right? You can see that it is. Okay, we want this a little further out, I think. Like right here. Um, it is a, I, that's what I'm wondering too, Julie. Like when I got it, I was like, could I have just bought a, a binding attachment or is this calibrated to hold thicker fabric? That's what I'm wondering. So let's just start sewing a little bit and see what happens. We're not far enough over. I'm gonna move that over because my left needle is not going onto the fabric. Is this too close for you guys? Is that okay? Oh, really, Joey? That why well, I'm hoping that I'm gonna get this going today and we're gonna do something like that. Okay, wait, did I cut, did I forget to thread my needle? No, 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 we just tested it. What's going on here? Oh, you're not threaded. Okay, so I must've broke a thread, all right. When you do this on a, like, if you're talking about doing this on like a neckline, this is so awkward to thread for me. But I just realized today that I thread the needle with my non-dominant hand. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's so hard, but I couldn't do it with my right hand. I don't know why. I do a lot of things with my left hand. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, when you do a, um, you have a jiggy fifty. Oh, okay, cool. Ooh, okay, cool. So, if you're doing a, um, just in case you don't stay, Joey, I'll give you one tip about doing um, like a, if you wanna do like a cover stitch knit binding on a t-shirt, what I would do is leave one shoulder open. So, you know, put your front to your back on one shoulder and then put the binding on around the neck and then close the shoulder. And then you have to get really good at lining up that seam and then when you have that seam and you, you've put a seam through your binding now, you're gonna push that seam towards the back and top stitch it down, at least within the binding width. So, really? No, I'm, not, I'm rubbish at using my left hand. I do use the mouse for my left hand, but, um, okay, I just broke the thread again. Okay, so what would that be? Let's, this is this one here. We're going to loosen this up a little bit. I use the mouse in my left hand because of just repetitive motion issues, like injuries. And I go back and forth. Okay. Man, I could put a zipper fly in anything. I could sew you just about anything, but if uh, you wanted me to win a contest at threading a needle, <laughs> don't bet on me. <laughs> okay, it's right there. That's where it's... Okay, is this the fabric or is this the... I don't think this is the binding. I think this is the fabric. So we're going to... I'm gonna make sure my needle's all the way up there. So I'm gonna unscrew a lot and push it. Yeah, it's there, okay. 
Let's just change it then. To get my foot away from the pedal. I can't even push that through. I don't want to pull that out. If I can push it, there we go. I always check needles for barbs. Let's see. I'm gonna try, I had a jersey in there, but I'm gonna try a new one. I mean, uh, I just got my tweezers just so I didn't look so awkward. I tend to drop the needle when I'm using tweezers, so that's why I don't use it, use it so often. Try not to touch anything else. This is such a bad way to do that. Okay. So if we're breaking a thread, I loosened up the tension of this, but it didn't look like it was too tight. It looks nice though, look at that. When it's sewing, it looks good. This one is too tight though. This needle is sinking in further than that one. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. So you didn't buy the mounting plate from Erica's six screen, you bought it from eBay. And is it hard to um, like use it? Like, do you have to like do a lot of surgery on your machine to amount to add that? Can you be spontaneous? <laughs> the binding attachment is working great. It's just my machine working with the um, fabric right now. And it usually does great with this kind of fabric. Look at that. We'll use an, we'll use the tweezers. I can't even use tweezers good, you guys. It's going to be a, a needle threading stream. Oh my gosh. No, I just have to use my left hand. Please. <laughs> it just won't go through. Oh yeah, that's how my industrial is. It threads left to right. Maybe that's where I got that from. I've been doing it for so long, you know? It's that kind of an angle. I feel like I bent this needle too. I I'm just gonna take this off. I think I just need to be cautious here, right? I'm almost out of my little sample. Pull this out. Oh, I do do some that sometimes. I'm not messing around here. I've got a new needle. I do that a lot for um, threading anything, like to stabilize. It's the um, the fact that there's just not a lot of space. You can't lift this up any higher. It's kind of annoying. All right, let's use some of theirs. This is thicker than what I did here. See that, look how much thicker that is. So let's loosen that up again. I loosened my um, pressure foot. My thread isn't caught, is it? a good question honestly anytime I move it over here there's a lot of extra stuff over here feels pretty good let's get it sewing good on this fabric first it's 
See, I can't raise the needle up any higher. This is, this is the problem. The presser foot, there's so much stuff at the front of this presser foot right here, I can't get low enough. It's, it's going into the eye, it's just not pushing through. There we go. Probably a thinner thread, but this is text 27, so that's what I want. Okay, and now let's, let's pull this through. I don't ever do this, but we're going to today. There we go. Okay. Oh, smart, Terry. God, you always have so many good tips, Terry. I love it. I don't have much of this fabric here. Let's fold it this way. <laughs> This is some chonky fabric, you guys. <laughs> All right, we're gonna just hand walk it so we can feel, this already feels better. I feel like I hear something. That looks better. Look at that. Those needle, this one's a lot higher up now. Oh, look at how loose that is though. Mm. Mm. Okay, let's pull it out. Let's see if we can just pull it out and try it again. A little putty on the left. No, it's definitely the my machine, not the, the um, attachment. It's just this fabric because I just calibrated it for a fabric that's a little thinner. I'm just pulling this out so I can reuse it like that. Okay. We know it wants to be looser at least. Okay. I'm not going to, I don't want to lock the thread so I can remove it if I want. I got a mess. I got a mess in front of me here. Okay. That looks good. That looks good. All right, let's try it. Okay. I can, I could have used this. I could have used this. It is? Oh, oh, really? Thank you so much for telling me that. That is so cool. That is so good to know, I love that. I think the plate sounds like a really good idea just because it seems a little awkward, you know? over. I feel like it needs to be over more than I think right here. Cause see, the, I keep lining this up right here with the needle. Let me show you straight on. So I keep lining this up with the needle, but what's, but look at the binding. The binding is to the right of that more. That's what you need lined up to the needle. I can't leave my camera there, so I can't see if I do. So hopefully this is good. Okay. I think I'm a little too far to the left, but I'm gonna stick some fabric in there and bind it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Lurking is fine. Okay. 
looks so good. <laughs> Look at that. So I think that I could be more to the right. Like, and you see how much looser this needle is? I think I'm going to loosen this needle a little bit so that they look the same depth as one another. I don't know how obvious that is on camera, but if you can see how these stitches are sitting on top of the fabric a little bit more, and then these are a little sunk down. Either one would be fine, but I want them to be the same as one another. And it's really close to the edge. And so look, my needle fell off. It didn't really fall off, but you, you want it to be off of the fabric so that it's enclosing this raw edge, but it, it doesn't need to be this far away, right? So we can move this over a little bit more this way. Okay. Okay. Let's bust open one of these other, is this gonna show up well? Maybe this oatmeal. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. All right, let's let's um, clear the decks here. <laughs> Got a lot going on. All right. Okay. Got my sample thingy here. You. So you can see how quickly I went through that little sample they generously give you. So. Just buy her one roll at least, you know. I think, oh no, it works on YouTube. Oh, does it only work on tablets? Uh, I think so. Do you want me to zoom in more, Elena? I can zoom in more. I just can't move the camera closer. Let's do it. That's what I was hoping for, Blue Magilla. What do you think of that? Yeah, I don't think it is. Wait, do you like that? Okay, so let's, there's not much room for a spindle. So when I would have binding made, see, look, it came on a spindle or not a spindle, I mean a, a tube. There'd be a tube in the middle. Mine's really far away though. <laughs> I think I have that thing. I think I do have the stand. Oh yeah, it's in the next room, cool. So I could always set that up for this machine. I wanna put it on something, but we'll just put it here for now. They only added that recently, the pinch zoom thing. Twitch has always had it. And um, they only just added that in the last, less than a year. So one thing I will say, when we used to do this for regular quilting cotton, I would cut this at an angle. And I haven't been doing that on this because I wasn't sure if it you know, needed that kind of help going through there. We had this, um, when I sold that machine, the binding machine, here, let me pull this away so you can see what I'm doing here. So I just basically, um, this is one thing I got. You need to use this, don't skip this thing. So go, the, the, the first like upside down U, like here, this is an, we'll call this the N, U, N, right? So you're gonna go up, then down, then up, then down like that, right? And then you slip it in here. So we had this broken seam ripper and that thing was our clutch tool for setting up the binding attachment because the, the awl's great, but you don't have an awl at every machine sometimes, you know? So we had this broken, broken binding attachment. And when I um, sold it, I was like, don't get rid of this. You're gonna love this thing. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. You might have <laughs> influenced you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Terry, exactly. That's the kind I had. Oh, really, Elena? Well, I zoomed it in. Is this, does this work for you? So did you see this? I'm going to do this one more time. So if anyone's, this is, I'll, I feel like I do this in my sleep because of my old attachment. I've never had a single fold though before, so it feels really weird going through here. So I take it, cut it at an angle, right? And then go um, through your, 
I don't know what you want to call that, your guide, and then poke it through, poke it through. And this is exactly what this little tunnel is for, is pulling your binding through, get it a little bit to come out here. All right, my threads got pulled in there when I pulled it out. All right, so here we are, right? It's not looking good, it's looking a little scary, right? So now we're going to push it, push it in there. I push it past my machine, right, like that. And that's because I wanna to go to the right. I wanna push it and seat it in there so that it's, bind, it's um, folding nicely. And look at it, like think about it logically. Like, okay, if this, if this down here is, you know, if it's too much, in he, on this bottom thing here and it's like folding in or curling or something, that's not gonna go so well. You want it to look like it's gonna end up when it's in the attachment. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I got my cover stitch. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, 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 actually, I am always the first person to say you really don't need one of these, but it is, cause you just, it is kind of great, basically for hemming. You know, like you don't really need a cover stitch for hemming, but if you can get more use out of it, right? Okay, my fabric's starting to curl here. All right, we're just gonna go for this. Okay, so this time I've moved it a little more over. And I, if I look at this straight on, this edge of my binding is to the left of my needle quite a bit. Like look at it right here in that little space you see it, it's kind of going at an angle. I'm just trying to give you some ideas. So try everything, right? The ticky tacky holds really well. It's amazing what you can do with like fresh ticky tacky. All right, let's try this. Oh, let's put the presser foot down. My serger won't sew without the presser foot down. It really grabs the fabric and feeds really nicely. I'm really pleased with that. Okay, let's see. All right, let's see how far away. Oh, we're really far away now. We're too far away. Okay, so let's move this a little bit. I think eventually I'm gonna put this on my machine like a, like a note. <laughs> I don't think that's enough either. Maybe it's this binding too. This binding is um, a little different than what they sent. The stuff she sent was denser. This is a little lighter weight. So you're gonna have to adjust for things like that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna move this over. And you know what I'm gonna also do is kind of pull it a little over. Okay, see that's too far. I'm trying to pull the binding without pulling the fabric. Get it feeding where I want. I don't think that, I do think I need to have it over. Maybe I just didn't have it in there well. There's my hair. Okay, this looks pretty good. This is looking good. <laughs> leg fell off, but only my left leg since I need my right leg to press the pedal of my new cover stitch. <laughs> okay. Let's look. Oh. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to finish this and then we're going to sew my my um should I? My camas all together. I'm trying, I'm kind of scared to use my home cut binding though. That might be pushing it. For my first time, you know? I feel like I'm really close to the edge again. So making sure that it's not going to travel. Look at, look at, it fell off the edge. So I need to make sure that, um, I don't fall off the edge like that. I'm just gonna soak it a little bit and get it out of there. One thing I've learned with binding is you're gonna waste some binding doing this, so just get good with that so that you're not putting all that pressure to save every inch of your binding, all right? 
cut extra. So I kind of went off the edge here, but look through here. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, well, let's do the stretch factor. Let's pull this back so you can see more. Well, I'm gonna stretch like, okay, so this is three inches. It's stretching probably an inch. Yeah, stretching about an inch. It's pretty stretchy. It feels nice and um, solid. My life is complete. This is the single fold. Yeah, I do have a um, double fold. So let's try that actually. Let's set that one up. But let's look at where we have this right now. So right now I have this little thing here So there's a little um, tongue. Can you see it's like a little L pointing at me? This right here for me is lined up with the inner edge of my left of my presser foot right here. So my presser foot is in three sections. You can even see it's kind of like a built-in hump jumper. So there's this middle section, which is a little higher, and this one's even higher right now. And so this one, this line right here, this tongue or whatever you want to call it is lined up with that. So that's, that's what I'm going to try and remember. Okay. Um, let's pull this out. Okay. Let's put this big guy on here. A lot of fluff under there. Yeah, let's do the double first and then we'll play around with the, oops, sorry. I mean to whack the camera. Yeah, so double fold will mean that there's folding on top and bottom, underneath and on top. So like traditional quilt binding, right? And then single fold always means that there's only one fold on top and on the bottom, it's a raw edge. So it's doing this. Your fabric is right here. So this is single fold, right? Kind of like a backwards lowercase e. Double fold, that's not wide enough for me to show you. Double fold is like traditional, so it's got Like this, like this. And your fabric goes where my thumb is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's actually folded three times. There's a lot of home, home sewing terms that don't jive with, with like production. Uh, I mean, I feel kind of like it's gilding the lily, Julie. I don't really feel like it's that necessary to be honest. But I did get a wider one just for it to look different. Cause I was thinking like, like what um, the person said earlier about t-shirts, I thought it would look nice. I think, I agree Sanwee. I think single fold is better for knits. I, I totally agree with that. I, it was just that thing like, oh, I'm buying something from, it's traveling a long way. <laughs> you know, let's get it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna use this bigger binding. Oh, I also got out the puff thread to try in the looper. I never use the stuff. So I was like, man, eh, yeah, this might be actually a good thing to use it on. All right, so again, we're gonna, um, this thing is, you know, got the double fold, right? I put this tongue, I'm gonna line it right up with that thing and we'll just see if that's a good spot for this. All right, and then let's pull this little arm out. Ooh, this is some wide binding. I've never used binding this wide in an attachment. This will be fun. It's kind of a terrible noise, isn't it? Okay. See how nice that is to have this little like tail to grab? All right, and then push it in there. Ooh, it just starts 
folding. <laughs> All right, so um, my presser foot has gone under my machine because it doesn't go with this machine. And I have my whole sewing machine on vibration pads. So they're like this high up. And so the, the, the little cover stitch presser just went under the machine. <laughs> Okay, this is in my way. I want to look around that. All right, so I'm just going to push the binding this way to get it to make sure I'm getting it going. I still feel like that's just too. I'm not sure if it's the machine kind of pushing it away. It did see some release when I did that. That's pretty good. So there it is. It's a pretty chunky thread back there. I could maybe use this blue on my camisole, huh? And then I wouldn't have to use my homemade stuff. That sounds like a prudent thing to do. <laughs> but I need to change the thread color. <laughs> Changing thread versus using homemade binding. What do we think? Should we just try the homemade binding? It's already made. Let's try it on some fabric, actually. Erica's little stickers are everywhere. Uh, here we go. We'll use this. Okay, so this right here looks like it's getting a little shallow, but I think it's okay. Maybe it's just an optical illusion. Looks good. I think I'm going to try the puff thread. What do you guys call that? Wooly nylon. Wooly, I'm going to try the wooly nylon. Oh, I'm actually not using Tex 27 thread, am I? Oh, I'm using 40. So if I, if the, if this thread, I'm going to use this, um, it's, it's called wooly nylon, I think. Maxi lock stretch. So do you see how the thread looks like this? So it's not like a, you see how it's just like wispy. We're going to try that. That'll be a softer finish on the inside, hopefully. I never use this stuff. It was really you guys that made me get it. Ooh, it's like, sounds funny. Okay. There's a lot of stuff sitting here. Here it is. Oh, on the edge of, that's smart. No, just the one. Yeah, just the, just the one. I don't actually have enough to do that. Do you use it on all, all of yours? I just got enough to do the underside, press her foot, or the foot pedal. Well, that doesn't sound so good. Oof. Uh-oh, oh dang it. Of course I did something. Did 
trying to get this away from my needle so it stops pulling on it. Oh my gosh. Phew. Okay. Now we're back in threading purgatory. Oh, he just went. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I got, I got a black, uh, that that weird creamy color. Oh, and a gray. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's thicker. I don't think of it as thicker. That's funny. It's very wispy. I'm using pretty thick thread on top, which isn't really ideal serger thread. I'm just using my industrial machine thread. I don't know why I did that. For some reason, I thought I picked the other, but I put that on my serger by accident. So um, let's just sew a little. <laughs> Let's see how it does. Maybe it doesn't like it in general. I've really not used it much. And you know what I need to do is put this little mesh thing back on the cone because it is having a party back here, man. So I'm just gonna slip it over the cone like this. No, 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 not like this, from the bottom. just to kind of make it not fly all over the place. Okay. And the mesh just came right with it. Okay, well, we'll do that later then. And now we have a little mesh problem. <laughs> now we have a mesh problem. I know how much you guys love it when I struggle. Oh, I didn't catch it. Okay, let's see. I mean, yeah. That's nice. It's the, yes, exactly. It does stick to, yeah. Hey, Shem, how's it going? You <laughs> made t-shirt making, making maniac last year. Right? Oh, exactly. Longest process, cutting out the binding. Yeah, truer, wor truer words. Um, let's try this again here. With the puff thread, maybe. Okay. Okay, I'm just making sure it's all like sitting left more. It feels like it wants to push this way. I wouldn't say it is softer back there, but it's still pretty thick. You know? Yeah, definitely the impromptu stream. You just start throwing some of this stuff away down here. All right, let's um, bind something. And then we'll try the homemade. And I might switch my upper threads to something lighter, you know? Oh, you know the other crazy thing I wanna to try today? I wanna to put clear elastic in there. Sanwi, did you ever try that? You probably didn't have a need for this though with t-shirts, huh? Do you think that's crazy? 
Because I'm about to make this camisole and it's a baby rib, so it's super <laughs> stretchy, you know? I was thinking maybe I should kind of like give it a little stability. Let's try it. Look, I put this in a spice, a magnetic spice thing, because man, I just got this stuff and holy, unruly, you know, craziness, Batman. Wow. All right, let's see if I can get my, my, uh, let's, let's just try it. <laughs> okay. I don't think anything went awry. At the end, it slipped out. See it right there? I think, so this is, where'd I start that stuff? I can't tell. I have some skip stitches when I went off, look. When I went off of the fabric here, I got some skip stitches. And that's probably the elastic itself. I wanna know how far, how far did I do that? Did I start that? Was it here? Here. Feels like I did it here. Yeah, the, it's right here, okay. And I don't have any skip stitches through here. So it's just when it went off the end of the fabric that I got the skip stitches. Okay, good to know, right? Yeah, chewing gum. <laughs> hubba Bubba. It works the best. Bubblicious just doesn't cut it. Or chiclets. No, it's just ticky tacky. They look like chiclets though, don't they? Okay. Okay, so where are we at? We're going to try homemade binding. I have some homemade binding right here, but it's not this thicker rib. We could at least start with that. I feel like I need a little bit more putty. <laughs> like it's even coming undone here. I may have to take Sanwee's advice and get the, the attachment. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, like, you know, like when camisoles, you use the binding to make the strap. I feel like using this stuff as the strap, this really, really lightweight, it's, there's going to be like, you know, like no stability, right? So that's what I was thinking. I'm going to put a little piece of putty under this right here. Like that. Would not use gum, it'd be all gross right there. <laughs> uh, but I know you're as gullible as I am. I gotta take advantage when I can. <laughs> all right, let's try this. Oh, I'm not sure I want to try that mainly because I don't want to calibrate it for this, I want to calibrate it for my other stuff. So let's just um. Change to lighter weight thread. Don't I have, I don't have any. I actually don't have any. I have white, right? This doesn't specify, but I have, um, oh, here we go. I already got them out. I already got them out. They're right here. A small clamp, that's actually a good idea. A little clamp, because I do have, there's, it's like a lip right here. I could put a little clamp there. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, Elena. But uh, Sanwi said that they bought one on eBay. Like uh, you can attach this to an attach, like a plate. And Erica Siskrin sells that plate. So you might as well just get it if you're buying the attachment if you want, you know. 
All right, so we're just gonna switch to a lighter weight thread since I thought that's what I had on. Hi, Sherry, how's it going? You just got here, so I may have missed if you said, why are you using teak sticky? No, it doesn't have that. I bought the, the, the binding attachment third party. So it's not a Juki binding attachment. They don't make one. Oh yeah, tiny C clamps, that's a good idea. I mean, so it sounds like, Sanwi said that you put it on this and then it stays on here and you can put it on and off. So I'd have, maybe I should just look at what it is. It's, maybe it's not replacing the throat plate if you can leave it on to here. Or maybe taking this throat plate out is really easy. You take out a screw here and then you just mount the whole thing on there. Let's look at that. It's just these two screws. So that's probably a good call. Oh, command strips. But you know what would happen is that those would be there grabbing everything. Oh, piping. Don't tempt me. <laughs> All right. Oh, I thought I had uh, already threaded my needles and I was like, wow, I don't even remember doing that. Where's the puff thread? Where's, I hate that I can't secure the looper. I really miss my baby lock serger or cover stitch. Well, just that whole thing sometimes. But this one sews nicer. I just miss some of the like nicer features it had like where it locked the stitch and stuff, you know? Go through, come on. Hey Shim, when you, um, I asked everybody this earlier, when you thread your machine, do you use your dominant hand? Like if you're right-handed, do you thread your machine with your right hand? Yeah, I was thinking the Velcro would be the one that you could, but then that Velcro would be there, you know? Oh, you just attach the plate to the two screw holes. Oh, so you just take the screws out and then you, you attach it there. Yeah, that's what I, I think I need to get that. Anything that'll make you use it more and makes it stable. And then this is probably like this right here usually is where a screw goes to the other plate and then this makes it so you can slide it right here. Cause this is, I know, I know that for a fact cause my other binding attachment does that, right? You use your dominant finger. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, wait, we're doing single fold. Okay, we've got the Elastic, we are just doing everything today. We've got the elastic. Maybe when I'm really feeling cocky, I mean confident, <laughs> I will thread the elastic in with the binding. Oh, okay, okay. You use your dominant hand too? Huh, very interesting. Okay, so let's see. I have very little fabric. I, I'm really excited because this is one of the fabrics I got on that um, Girl Charlie had a sale, a dollar fifty for for half yard pieces, and there were all these half yard pieces, and I just got a bunch of them because I was like, a dollar fifty. This is great. I can make lots of underwear. Well, guess what? It's the perfect size for a camisole. All you need is a front and a back. If you want matching bi matching binding, then you're gonna you're gonna struggle a little bit. But I got a little bit, and I got this one. This one is actually gonna give me trouble because do you see the stripes are going vertical? The ribbing is going horizontal. This is how you're supposed to cut it. <laughs> I'm already feeling cocky. <laughs> so we'll just see how well this goes. 
This one could definitely use the elastic in it though. Let's try it though. I really was low on fabric and I thought, well, we'll just put this one on here and see if it works. We try everything in this channel. We experiment. Okay, I can't even get it threaded here. This fabric is so lightweight. You see a screw hole on my machine? You mean this one? That's my throat plate. Let me see if I can shade it for you. Oh, I really can't sh shade it for you. There, see? It's my throat plate. Okay. Look how, see, it's very, so lightweight it keeps doing this. You do not want that to happen. Always watch your binding. It's very, a very small piece. <laughs> I don't think this is gonna go on very nicely. I'm trying to push this here. See, see this little, um, no, you can't see that. Okay, do you see right here, this curving out? It's supposed to go the other way, like that. When you see that, try and correct it. It's just really lightweight. And so what happens is this edge right here needs to flip. So I'm gonna pull it a little bit and kind of try and correct it. There we go. That's a little better. It's not very nice under the needle yet though. So we will force that as well. It looks stressful. I'm having a blast. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. This keeps getting caught though. You're, you're, you missed a lot of the like tri trial, like figuring it all out. And now I'm in the, the overconfident phase. So we're like, let's put it to the test like a silly goose that I am. I cut out a camisole that I want to try binding with the like home cut binding, which I don't recommend. <laughs> I would use their pre-cut stuff. Okay. How did I do this? I did it here. So let's sew a little bit. I don't have much binding, so we might run out. <laughs> I used to have a really good situation with my foot pedal, but. <laughs> right now it's fiddly because I'm just learning. I've never even done elastic in binding like this. Okay, wait, we're, we're pushed, we're pushed out. We're pushed out, we're pushed out. We need this to be over here. You know how we were talking in workshop yesterday about that one word we need to describe when a beginner decides to, you know, build the Taj Mahal before they know how to build the garden shed? <laughs> Can I support the binding higher than the attachment? Uh, I would do it straight off. In fact, I, I really wish I'm, I could set it up higher, the binding. You couldn't figure out how to get into the workshop, Jan? Did you not use the event link for yesterday? I'm sorry. There wasn't very many people. I wonder if other people had trouble too. Was it from a particular group? I'm gonna skip the elastic. My confidence is a little low on this right now. Is it sewing? It's not sewing. Oh. 
Were you trying from journeyist or master? I was just thinking about you, Jan, because I have a, a wedding to go to and a, it's kind of 1930s theme. And I was like, I need some ideas for doing a 30s hairstyle that I can manage. Okay. The homemade binding may, I probably shouldn't have started with the, the, this one fiddly one that's cut the wrong direction. But um, it has to be done first <laughs> before I bind the others. So if you just want to like do whatever you're doing, get your snack, you can keep and keep watching that TV show you're watching. I'll sh holler at you when I got it going. <laughs> Okay. I don't think I'm sewing. Am I sewing? Let's see. No, I'm not really sewing. This is just, this binding is not going to work. Low bun at the nape of the neck with it loosely swept into it. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, Jan. Um, I'll teach you how to do that. If you go in the guild um, and you go to the events tab on the left side of the screen, kind of towards the top on the left, there you'll see all the events. And when you go to the one you want, it'll say like meeting link or Zoom link or YouTube link, and that's what you cut. I said easy, Julie. Get out of here with your pin curls nonsense. This is looking like a hot mess, by the way. So we're just gonna pull this out. It looks like a hot mess, but it's, oh, it's actually sewing it. It doesn't look so good. Oof, and I didn't have enough, okay. <laughs> we're just gonna pull this out. I have lost one needle. And we're going to try and find that magic little thread. I can't remember right now which one it is. They are very easy. Pin curls? Really? I can braid my hair. That's the level we're talking about. <laughs> right, Sunwee? I mean, you gotta know, right? That we, we've, we've, we gotta know. We got to know what it's going to do. Let's see. Oh, yeah, this is the end. Okay. Gel comb pin done. Gel comb pin done. Gel. I don't even own a comb, Julie. This is what we're talking about. I think I'm gonna get a, a, a nice hair comb though. And it'll be all about the hair comb, not whatever I do to my hair. <laughs> I, I don't know. I am thinking about the Folkwear beach pajamas mishmashed with the uh, Myrna by Colette. I like the bodice of the Myrna it has like a triangular feature at the waist in the center front. And I just think I could do something with, it's kind of fun with that. Um, I don't want a tank top like beach pajamas usually are. I want fluttery sleeves. So I was also thinking like the butterfly blouse from Decades of Style. <laughs> Probably Elena. Oof, yeah, I think that this was really just the direction of my binding. I was being way too ambitious here. Okay. Sorry, I want to save this little 
I don't want to save the binding. I just want to get it off so I can just use something else. Maybe I'll stick with theirs. I haven't tried my other homemade binding that is cut properly. I just don't know if I have, literally, I don't know if I have enough. So maybe I should just stick with theirs, you know? Okay, Katherine Hepburn styling, that's a good idea. Okay, okay, thank you, I appreciate it. I don't wanna ask for free advice. <laughs> okay. Just I, Right now I'm just looking for this little thread again because now that I got back to the part where there's two threads sewing, it's I had to start over finding my chain stitch. It's here somewhere. I used to be able to just pick that out really easily and now I just kind of hack and slash until I find it. You know, I should just figure out where it's at again. I think I'm on the verge of it, finding it. <sighs> yeah, and even my makeup routine, I'm like, okay, what could I manage for that, for the 30s, you know? Maybe just a lipstick would be good enough for me. <laughs> I can manage a lipstick. I know where my lips are. <laughs> I put my makeup on today. I wear makeup now because my skin, the rosacea on my skin is really, it's just distracting, you know? And so I, um, but I don't use true foundation. I use like, I don't know, some sort of like hydrating thing. So it's very light. And I use the um, stuff from Lush called Warmth. I love that stuff. Dramatic lip. Yeah, exactly. And um, I don't wear eye makeup at all because I'm an eye rubber. Jeez, this is feeling hopeless right now. I know it's not. I'm just distracted. So, yeah. I think I'll, I don't know. Maybe I, I probably want to wear my glasses. I'm showing up. What the heck? Why is this so hard right here? Oh, look at how dense it is. Uh, my model 8700-7. A little smoky on the lid. Look at Bessame Cosmetics. They have all the... Okay. Thank you, Jan. Bessame Cosmetics. Katherine Hepburn. Okay. I used to love watching Katherine Hepburn movies when I was quite young, actually. Do you unpick right to left? Right now, I'm just looking for anything that will pick. It's the uh, stitches on top are so tight, it's not giving me much leeway. I'm close, look, I'm really getting close, I promise. Let's just, we'll release this right here. I can't even like see the stitch. It's so tight right now. I will have this gamma soft now. <laughs> I could think I was been like shopping fabric for this 1930s thing. And then I got this fabric order yesterday that I, I have been kind of watching uh, this one fabric that Blackbird had been teasing. And I um, was like, you know, I haven't I hadn't ordered from there in a long time. And I was like, that I would order. <clears throat> and I was kind of, you know, watching out for it. It was one of their crinkle cottons. And then I got the, e like, I was literally looking for the email. I got an email from them, but the title of it, I just didn't, it did not say that that's what it was. They called them something else, and I was like, oh, that's not it. Shoot. And then I saw them saying something about it on Instagram. I was like, wait, that's the fabric. And I went, and I was like, okay, it's there. So I got it. I got it in. Oh, I found it. And um, I actually think it'll work great. I showed it in the workshop yesterday. It's at my home now being washed, but, um, whew, man, 
We survived. We barely survived that. Okay. All right. A little jukey. Jukiella. Okay. Let's get you going again. Carolyn Dermacolor. So dab covers everything and you only need to put it where you want to have cover. You'll send me some ideas. Okay. Because now I'm like, okay, can I remember this? <laughs> it's kind of been a revolutionary thing in my life that I learned about the little sponges. <laughs> Blending thingies. My daughter had to help me with that. I didn't wear makeup my whole life until the last few years. I'm very new to it. I've never colored my hair either. I don't know why. I just like, I'm just kind of a noob when it comes to all that stuff. Maybe it's just like the people I hung out with. No, they were all into that. What am I talking about? I don't know. I, I, I think like, not to sound like dramatic, but I really can't sit in a salon for very long. I can't sit there. I do not like them like touching me the whole time and talking to me. And that sounds so rude, but I think it's just because you feel so captive sitting in that chair. And it's a little stressful for me. And my the last person I had doing my hair, she was really nice, she was really awesome. You know where this is going. <laughs> she talked so much and she, while she sort of like, we had very similar views and ideas, she was very extreme in her viewpoints on things. And there I was like strapped to a chair. You're not strapped there, but you know, you have the cape on and your hair's wet and they've got scissors and, and there's other people in there. And it was just like, <sighs> I mean, I wish the panini never happened, but let me tell you, um, that was a blessing for me because I really, like I said, I really liked her. This has fallen out of its little thread thingy. I just was looking for a way to get out of that situation. I didn't realize it until I got one. So it has no chit chat, just service. Oh, I like that. I bet that the, um, the people who do the salon thing appointments feel the same way. Yeah, that wasn't really, that didn't ever felt like it was a viable option with her, Elena. Like, I, and I get it because my nervous habit is to chat. That's why I chat so much here. Um, and I think hers was too, because it was non-stop, 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 the whole time. <laughs> my daughter went there one time and she, when we were walking out, she looked at me and she was like, no, like, why are you putting up with this? I know you don't like that. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna give this, I don't know, we're gonna, we're gonna use the, um, oh, right, I have to use the narrower stuff. All right, what do we think? Do we want, so here's my little camisole. It looks kind of like, I don't know, I really love the way this fabric looks. The, fa the colors in it are kind of like this, right? We have three options of the pre-cut. All very boring. This one right here is Mullen. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's like a brownish gray. But it looks like it has a cute name. Yeah, that's it, Mullen. Exactly, my age too. Dark gray melange. That is exactly what that is. Melange usually means, um, you see how it's like got the white flecks in it? That's usually what melange means in fabric. Um, I also call this heather, he heathered. And usually that happens, don't you love all this useless trivia I give you? Um, that you did not ask for, because I'm just chatting because I get nervous. Um, but we still didn't need to pick though. I want the blue, but it's not the right width, unless I do the double fold. Um, 
tethering happens because usually it's a cotton poly blend and when they dye it, the polyester doesn't dye and the cotton does. And that's where you get the little flecks and the gradation in the fabric like that. So, what do I think? I mean, maybe, uh, it doesn't really suit it, you know? Should I try my, let's just try the home stuff again, one more time. <laughs> I've got to know. Hmm. I don't know everything. Um, switching your camisole to one with bias or woven. Yeah, I think you could do that with some success depending on how you fit your camisole. Are you talking about at the beginning of March when I showed how to draft one using a t-shirt pattern? So if your camisole isn't a very really tight fit or a really like really close fitting um, and it's, you know, at least body skimming if not more, I think you could safely bias cut wovens. What I would do is add whatever seam allowance you have on your pattern, add that again. You know what I mean? Add that again and, and that might be enough ease, even if you don't use bias. You don't really have to do too much different unless you made yours negative ease and really, really tight. So. Wait, what did Heidi say? The panini got, oh, right. <laughs> oh my goodness, Jim. That is like a double-edged sword. For the bias cut, yeah, I think either way, I would try, I would add your seam allowance again, just like a little extra ease is what I'm saying. So basically you're adding an inch and a half circumference. So if you have a three eighths inch seam allowance on each side seam, that's three quarters on each side, that's an inch and a half total. So what you could do is maybe cut your camisole with that extra seam allowance, right? And then sew it together without finishing the seam or even just pin it together, hold it up to you. It's gonna feel funny. Bias always feels funny, but trust me when you've been wearing it for a little like while that day, you'll, it'll be fine. It feels funny though, because you feel it pulling, like it feels asymmetrical and that's the other thing. Your camisole is going to drop, one hem is going to drop lower than the other, and that's because of the bias, because of the pulling. How you said try double fold? I think that's a good idea, because then we can use this blue, right? What do we have here? We have this one. Let's just do the double fold. Okay. Okay. This is it. All right, we're gonna cut an angle. Yeah, let me know how it goes. And you could, you know, uh, for the finishing, you could make a facing with a spaghetti strap for your shoulders. And your facing is literally just like a um, parallel piece, right? You know, like two, two and a half inches cut, something like that to your top edge. And then you can sew and turn that right sides together, but make sure you make your little spaghetti strap. And if you make, you can make it adjustable, put like a three bar slider in there from like a bra strap. And then you won't even have to figure out, oh, we need a different thread color. That's what we were just baiting on. Thank you and you are the right weight, but are you the right color? Not really. Let's get some gray. Let's do this. Or, oh, that's only, I only have one spool of this. That's disappointing. <laughs> Who has one cone of thread? I was looking at the Waywax site thinking um, maybe I could buy a lot of thread. But they only let, they only sell you of cones because I, I really do need more cones that are the proper weight. 
but you can only buy, it's like that you could buy the whole shebang, right? You could spend $500 on thread, but you only get one cone of each color. I'm like, that doesn't help me at all. What they need is the starter pack, right? They need the, oh, you have an industrial machine, you have a serger and you have a cover stitch. So you need nine cones of thread in four basic colors. <laughs> That's what they need. That's if you were using all of them at one time, right? All right, so I'm just gonna sew this. I'm gonna set it all up, I'm gonna sew this and then we'll be done. Yeah, right, we need a starter pack. <laughs> So I'm just going to use uh, this on my, this one right here, I'm going to use this on my needle, needles, and I'm going to use this, this puff thread I was just telling you about on my loop, looper, so. Wait. I don't really like the color though. Dang it. Hmm. Um... I'm kind of at a loss for thread color here. I have this, but it's a little heavier. It's also gray. Ugh. How is this the hang up? Well, I guess, I guess I'm going to use these. Oh, well. Oh, well, that's how it, I'm going to use a Tex 40. <laughs> yeah, I just was kind of like, oh, it'd be really nice to have a huge assortment. Like, I don't need one of every cone of every color they own, you know, like it would just be nice to have a rainbow and they sell like maybe like a four pack of a of like eight colors, right? That's still, you know, 32 cones of thread. I don't need, um, whatever it is. I think it's like a hundred cones, you know, the price break isn't worth the buying the whole thing in my opinion too. It's like 30 cents. So, you know, yeah, just exactly. Just buy what you need instead. <laughs> navy, I'm not sure navy would work with it. I think that would show too. It's a trial, right? This was a dollar fifty. That's the way I got to look at it, but it is one of the favorite ones I got. All right. We are confident needle threaders. We are confident needle threaders. I'm kind of floored that all of you use your dominant hand to thread the machine. I'm gonna try that right now. <laughs> I can't do, I can't do this. Ooh, ooh. But it went in. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, wait. Okay, okay, that actually, maybe there's something to be using your dominant hand. All right, this is the double fold. No. Why do you do that when, you know what? The thing is, I think not testing out, getting my thread going on the binding is a good idea. It's just not, you know. I don't know, I, what, wait, you don't understand why you think it's strange to use your dominant hand the holes front to back and not on the left side. My dominant hand is my right hand. And I, I always use my left hand to thread things because it is on the left side of the machine. So I think it's weird to use your dominant hand. I guess that's what I'm getting at. 
And maybe I should have tried that a long time ago, but I think it's because my industrial threads left to right. You know? We just need a little scrap piece of fabric here. To get it going before we throw it through the binding machine. You can tell me the camera's funky, you guys. All right. Looks good. Let's do it. We want this. Um, I'm just gonna cut this off. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, tweezers are okay. Uh, I used to have really good tweezers, and now these aren't as great. So. Maybe, yeah, Sue. I eat with my left hand, but that's because my husband's left-handed. I'm so adaptable. <laughs> Till I'm not. Till you put me in a salon, <laughs> then I'm like, nope. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try my elastic thing too. Uh, you know, we gotta still push the envelope. Right. Yeah, I think this needs to be, the spool needs to be higher up, not sitting on the ground pulling. Like if I could put it on a box or something. A lot to keep track of. I'm not on the binding. Me. I think that this probably does look really fiddly and it's because I keep changing things like what I'm doing. So bear that in mind. Once you had it set up for what you like doing it for, it's gonna be great. Yeah, when I was falling off, I was skipping stitches over there. So at least I can pull those out and fix it. Okay, this is going good. I think. <laughs> okay. Phew! So a little bit more. You you use your non-dominant hand to thread your machine too, Libby? See, I'm not the only weirdo. So that's where it skips stitches right there. It feels really thick. It looks nice though, except for these skip stitches right here, which I can fix on my machine. It's very thick though. I, maybe I don't need the elastic, you know? All right, so now, we're going to um, I need to do this for like a long time. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with you, Diane. I'm just looking for my pattern piece to see how long of a strap I need because I can't remember. It's written on my pattern here. So let's see for strap 14 and a half inches little less for fabric okay 
So we just need like a 14 inch long strap. The edge won't stretch out. I don't think so. I mean, I, I put this like um, the elastic in there. So we're gonna make a long strap now and I'm just gonna hold this up and my elastic up while I do it. The spice box is working really good for this elastic though. Okay, that's too fast. I don't think it likes this elastic. Let's just cut that off and get past it. Okay, I need to rethread this one. I'm not surprised it doesn't like the elastic. It was kind of a, a dream. Which, which, ed, which edge are you worried about stretching out? The, um, I cannot see the hole. I'll use the tweezers to grab it. How's that? That make you feel better? <laughs> that is very practical. Did I lose it again? I'm about to just get rid of this puff thread. You know? I'm thinking a different needle could help, but right now I have jersey needles on. I think that it's also this puff thread, but I just, uh, I don't know. Uh, plus remember I changed thread weight. I think a lighter weight top and uh, needle thread would be better. Um, But we're, this is what this is for. This is what this is for. We're figuring it out. I'm just gonna switch to a lighter weight thread on top. And then we'll know the formula for this machine. Oh, that's neat, Mom, I love that. Yeah, when I did gymnastics, uh, that also helped me too because you have to do everything with your left hand. You know, like your cartwheel has to be identical left and right. The first time I did like a, a cartwheel with my left hand facing, I, I probably fell on my face. And I, when I <clears throat> would teach um, like really little kids to first starting, I'd say, all right, you know, you, they'd learn their cartwheel, have that down pat, and then you'd say, all right, now we're gonna start it with our other hand going, start leading, right? Um, and you know, you'd do the example, all right, you've been doing it this way. You know, the righties were doing this way, the lefties were going this way. And then you'd say, all right, now I want you to turn and do it. They would start and then they would flip and do it. Like they flip around and do it the other way. They could not make their, their little bodies <laughs> obey. <laughs> so funny it's like oh I I know exactly what you're going through <laughs> it's kind of cute I'm using the puff thread in the looper I didn't think you would use that in the needle I think you do on a flat lock but not on cover stitch right I mean I don't know maybe home machines are different All right, so if this doesn't help, I'm taking away the puff thread and just putting in regular thread in the bottom. So now I'm, need, I'm gonna need binding that always matches the threads I have on hand. <laughs> just gonna clean this up a bit, pull this back. Looks pretty good though. Not stretchy. 
I think the elastic prevents the stretching. It is soft. All right, let's just sew a little bit with the um, regular fabric, get it set up again. Okay, that's good. Uh, put it back on. <laughs> Kira, that's hilarious. See, it is, it's really a brain teaser. Yeah, it, like doing a cartwheel with your left hand is really just, like even if you don't do cartwheels, but maybe you have in the past and you've never tried it with your other hand, just stand up and, and just pretend that you're gonna do it. It feels so bad. That is incentive. Maybe I should have paid him a quarter. Did I, is this not threaded? It's this one here, this is the problem. This right hand needle, it's always this right hand needle. When I get to the rib knit that's a little thicker. So let's um, lighten that up a little bit, the needle tension. Okay, I can poke it through pretty easily and then I'll just grab with the tweezers. Nineteen seventy six. <laughs> yeah, right left legs up. Oh my gosh, ballet, they really have to do it perfect left and right. Um, I'm gonna clip this thread because it's going under this part of the machine there. All right. Ooh, see this is this uh, ticky tacky losing its luster. I don't know if Sawi's still here. If you, are you in the guild? Can you send me a link to that eBay attachment? <laughs> okay, the other thing to think about is I just realized that this is actually kind of hung up over here. I got a lot going on over here. Um, you don't want anything dragging on this, like pulling on it. So make sure you don't have that kind of tension because when it starts pulling on it, it's gonna pull on your needle, you know? All right, we're doing good. We're gonna ni go nice and slow. Or at least even, even speed. I feel like I'm really close to the edge. Making a strap right now. Oh, the 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 you're not allowed to post links in the chat. The link is in the guild. Thank you, Blair. You knew it too. Yeah. Sorry, I have to prevent that. Not from because I I trust you guys, but. You know, 
All right, so we're just gonna kind of loosely, okay, we got plenty for our strap. All right, time to go on to the, the um, shirt here. So make sure you have all your edges even when you're doing any kind of binding. Like, see this right here? Look at that stellar stripe matching. <laughs> I was in a hurry before the <laughs> stream started. I was like, all right, I gotta sew this together. Just gonna even this out a little bit. And check my other underarm here. Okay, now we're going to make sure this little edge here is gonna be easy to go on and off because this is probably gonna cause us a little problem, especially with the elastic in there. And now we're gonna go onto the front. Here's the front, right? See, here's the little scoop front. We're gonna go on here and then around the back and then off the other edge and then leave enough for a strap. Oh, it's twice the allowed length. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So this is probably going to give me a little bit of, uh, of a headache. We're just going to go really slow over this thickness. We lost the pedal for a second there. You can hear it. We're just going to hand crank when we get past this binding. Because there's that elastic still in there, which my machine didn't really like. All right. So let's continue. Pulling my attachment. Ticky tacky, come on. This is, this is what feels like it's, I can see this. I can see this to being really tight. I didn't mean to do that. It's my right needle is really giving me a lot of trouble. Maybe I should work on the um, differential or this this the length. Yeah, right, Sherry. I know exactly what you mean. I love it too. When I saw it, I was like, oh, I love this little stripe. It's so nostalgic, retro. Michael Scott, Unagi, hmm. You, my friend, might be someone we, we will time out <laughs> without context. I mean, I've got context, but I, you don't. Thanks, Mullen. Yeah, I don't know. You can try again, Michael. I mean, Unagi sounds pretty good right now, but I'm kind of busy. So if you're offering, sorry. Plus, I only eat Unagi with one Michael. All right, we're going to try again. I think this needs to be more secure on here. No, it looked weird to me too. Especially with the emoji use. I was like, mm. See how I hate this when it wraps around the needle like this? Like right now, it didn't come unthreaded, but it's, it's wrapping around. Our fabric is just not calibrated with this very well. Maybe I should have taken out the, um, what's going on here? Boy, now I'm getting impatient. <laughs> reference, reference. Do you think it's the, um, 
So I remove the puff thread. Hi Fiona, how's it going? The thread carrier, just thought is the thread carrier fully extended? Oh, interesting. You mean this guy right here? Or over here? Cause this, I can, f I can see, right now it looks pretty good. I do have this one in the wrong, I don't know. Try that. <laughs> I didn't know the, I mean, I know friends, I didn't know the reference either. How many times have we threaded? We need like a little counter on screen. How many times I've threaded the needle today? Enough. So I just want you to know that the problem is the light on my presser foot right here. I can't see the hole. That's why I struggle so much right there. The fact that this gray is the same as my needle and the light on it is um, making it really hard for me. So my dreadful thread needle threading skills set aside, that's also a part, part of it. Jeez, come on. All right, we're gonna hand crank. Oh, and this is, this, see, this is bound. Oh, this is the problem right here, I know it. Got all bound up over here. We really need it on a spindle. I really want to run next door and get my spindle. Okay, we're gonna put you over there. I'm just gonna put it on my spindle that's way over here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sherry. <laughs> no, the tall thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. My serger has that problem though, Fiona. My um, serger, they pop out of one of the thread guy. One of them does. All right, let's see. It came out again. All right, the puff thread is going. You are out of here until I get better at this. When I get better at this, we'll add you back. What? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> thanks, Fiona. Oh, sorry, Michael, you and your Unagi. Your name wasn't Ross, so. I kind of want to just take this out. You know? I'm gonna take this out. We're gonna get it back on track. It is a Japanese eel dish. <laughs> who, who of you who have watched Friends, who's your, who's your least favorite character? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Okay. We're just going to, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna backtrack a little bit. This is the lesson of how to get it back on track. Let's see if I can manage it. I get determined sometimes. So we're gonna take this back to like right here. Actually, maybe we'll take it back to right here. And let's see if we can get it back going nicely. Rachel was your least favorite. Ursula. 
Phoebe's twin sister. Yeah, she was a little irritating. Like she was, she was stressful. How are you doing, Fiona? Nice to see you. Are you up late right now? I know Malin's probably up late. Okay, let's see here. I will make this delightful looking to use. We just gotta know everything we need, set up, and then it'll be fine, right? It's so funny because I think Rachel really annoyed me during that show too. Not more than Ross though. Ross for me was a no-go. He just oh, couldn't handle him. But, um, and I had a really good friend at the time. This is when I worked in the fashion industry. And we worked at a kid's clothing company. And someone there said, Oh, I know what, um, her name was Christina. My friend that I hung out with was my good friend. She's like, I know who she reminds me of. She reminds me of Rachel from Friends. And I, I had, I was like, oh my gosh, you're, you're so right. Like she didn't get on my nerves like Rachel did in the show though. It was really funny. Okay. Yeah, I bet it's bedtime. Ross was close, like, yeah, God, I just, <laughs> he was so whiny. <laughs> All right, tweezers, this is, this is the hero of the day, the tweezers. All right, uh, we have our new thread in there, right? We successfully put the third thread in there, yep, yep, yep. All right, um, where is this thread here? This thread is right here. You're doing fine too. I just, this is one thing I don't like about a cover stitch is that you can't just easily poke these threads through the hole of the presser foot. You know? <laughs> I don't remember that episode, but I love how much Friends trivia, you know, Fiona. <laughs> beautiful. Right? Beautiful. We like it. We like it. This is, this is, this looks good. Now, let's do it on a piece of binding. I think back then it was just like my age group, you know, they were my age. Here, let's. Just do this. We're gonna fold this and just try it. Just see, so make sure the threading's okay. I met my husband when Friends was airing. He didn't have a TV at the time. We had like TV, but we didn't have like cable. You know, I don't even cable was around, right? Yeah. And um, that looks good. And uh, I, I said something like, do you want to watch Friends with Us? And he was like, I don't watch TV like that. <laughs> He's like, but sure. And then he laughed so much during it. And I was like, mm-hmm, exactly. So. All right, so that's so how we're gonna get, try and get it back on track. 
We're going to insert this about where we left off. It won't look perfect, but at this point. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna pull this a little bit, make sure everything's been lined up, and then we're just gonna go. I hope this is to the left a little bit, like that. Oof. Have you heard of the story how my husband and I met Jan regarding Seinfeld? <laughs> Dang, I broke the thread again. We were doing so good till we added this layer of fabric. I'm gonna make sure my needle's not hanging down too low. It's not. That happens a lot with these mindless, stressless. Huh? All right. What do I think here? Do I want to do less? I'm going to do a little less pressure. Let's try a little less pressure. Pressure. Yeah, exactly. You need those kinds of distractions when you have like stressful, long time situations. Tweezers. I may not keep this stream because I really don't want to hear it in the comment section of you should do this. You should do that. It's like, yeah, you should have showed up. <laughs> you give me tips, you gotta show up. Tips only happen in live streams. Okay, so I lessened the pressure of my presser foot right now. That's, this is the trial I'm at right now. I'm gonna cut this little thread tail here. Lost it again. Hmm. I'm gonna switch my take take out my needle. I wonder if um. Eh. Come on, just please cut. Yeah, there we go. I wonder if a, the narrower needle setup would be better, but I don't think so. Whew. We started off pretty good here. It doesn't look great on here, but it looked good on the other side. It was doable, right? It is, it is nice. I think that I didn't need the elastic, so that's good. Like it does feel like it's got more stretch, you know? You're trying to right from here now. <laughs> well, that's what this was for. I am hungry. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> you probably do. <laughs> Um, I feel like when you just set aside time to be like, this may not go well, it's not that st stressful. Oh yeah, gainer. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many variables here, right? You have thread weight, you have your fabric, um, and the fabric's going to change every time you change it to a different binding. You also have the other thing of the pulling this right here, this tension, like when it does this, like say your roll sits low like this and it pulls down like that, that's never gonna be good. I'm looking at the screen so you can see it. Um, yeah, so I think there's a lot of variables here and you just gotta like go, all right, I'm just gonna try everything. Something will work. I just gotta figure out what that is. 
and then take the time to sort it out. Let's make sure nothing looks funny in here, but I don't think so. What is this thread right here, though? Oh, there was a loose thread under here. So many tools. There's a lot of really good tips that come with the binding attachment too. Like they, they give you some really good ones. Changing your stitch length um, is another one. Changing the pressure of your presser foot. So you have a lot of options. That's the way I look at it. It, it may seem overwhelming as far as like variables, but you, you really may not have to, oh, I was gonna change this needle. I'm gonna check it. Don't think of all these options as being like over overwhelming, you know, like, oh, I don't wanna have to fiddle with all those things. You most likely won't. They're just options, right? Night Mullen. This is uh, universal. I want a jersey needle. This one's open. I'm just changing my needle to be prudent. <laughs> the pressure, there's no pressure. I'm the only one who wants this, right? And if I don't like it, I just won't use it. I spent a hundred dollars on, on all of this. I'm not sure I would spend that much normally, but I knew that <clears throat> other people could probably benefit from this kind of trial and error thing. Um, and if it worked out, it would be really awesome. So for me, that's the incentive. I just really want to continue this and maybe that's, this is too ambitious. You know what I mean? I feel like it's this last layer here. So when I see stitches, they look pretty good. This one looks loose. This one looks loose. It looks okay. Let's change the stitch length a little bit longer. And let's just um, start sewing where we left off rather than, this is the other variable, this little gizmo moving around on your machine. A lot of variables. I'm gonna push it and I'm gonna pull the binding backwards to get it closer to where I left off. And we're gonna go past this side seam just to give us the least a number of trouble. I could probably still make a pair of underwear from this fabric if I can't get the canvas all to work. All right, all right, here we go. So, oh, my needle just fell right out. We're off to a terrible start here. The heck the heck did I tighten the wrong one it feels tight this is such an unsatisfying uh, tightener and I feel like you can't turn it past very far it's like tight and you can't turn it anymore it doesn't feel Hmm, anyway. Okay. So we have a slightly longer stitch length. Okay, I'm just gonna cut this thread tail off so it doesn't come back to haunt us. Okay. This little notch was for my strap. Feel like it's going I'm just gonna move it to the left a little bit I feel like I'm falling off there it goes hmm <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pull off this camisole. Look at that, it looks really good. Look at that. It's too far over. And then the needle breaks, or the thread breaks. So annoying. Let's try and check it out again. We're just gonna look at it all. So we have this, we're just gonna re-thread it too. So this one's fine, we just won't touch that. Blue, right, blue. Very good. Let's see. Okay. Not even my normal stream day today, so it's like a free free pass. I'll probably, I bet what I'm doing is so subtle. It's probably something like, um, like the order of operations that I'm starting sewing. Something a little bit more, I should be pickier about, you know? I should probably be pickier about doing all of it. Or maybe, well, I, we changed the light thread, so it's not that. Look at that, I did that with my right hand. Mainly because I don't think I could operate tweezers with my left hand. Okay. Now put this back in here. Oh, this one's about to fall out. Here's my under thread. Okay. Okay. Now let's do this one. Maybe I should have done the single fold. That was my original plan too. <laughs> cool as a cucumber, I'm hungry for a cucumber. <laughs> you just gotta give yourself the space to do these things, you know? And it's hard because, you know, most of us just want to get to sewing. We don't really want to have to fiddle with this. We don't want to do anything. We're just going to take this kind of fiddling, you know. But, like, hearing, you know, Sawi say, she, or they've been, like, making T-shirts with success, it's like, see, it's going to happen. Same machine. They have the same machine, so... Hmm, I kind of want to use some of this binding as the trial now. So let's cut a piece off. Let's get rid of this little sticker. And try it out. Actually, we'll just go like this, like this. It is thick. All right. All I did different this time was just re-thread my machine. That's it. Look at no problem. No problem. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful stitch. <laughs> Stick a piece of fabric in here. <laughs> I 
Oh, I lost that. That's what's going on there. Okay. Is it just too thick? No problems. All right. So it happens when I add the binding attachment. This is the same fabrics right here, right? So if it happens when I add the binding attachment, maybe it's too close to the edge and the tension is too uneven, right? Oh, we can, we've no, um, one hole. Oh, right, right, right. These, right. You're right, Sherry. Yeah, I have that little hole right there. That's not enough. It's only one. Um, there is a plate. You can get a plate from the person who makes these and that someone was in chat telling me about a place on eBay and Blair says she sent me a link to one. So I'm going to put this way over. Does anyone make underwear and uses knit binding for like the leg holes? I'm gonna stay, make sure my needles stay clearly on the binding this time. Cause maybe that is causing problems where the needle falls off the left edge because I'm too close to it. I want the plate. I think the plate's really key or a clamp or something. I'm, I, it's traveling this way now. It's like so far over. I don't really like the traveling. And maybe this is my cover stitch. Maybe doing narrower needles would be better. Okay, we're about to go over a seam allowance. Um, but we're still going. <laughs> Hi, Lindsay, how's it going? All right, so I'm holding my attachment to you, obviously. Um, and now we're about to go over this big hump here. I'm gonna hand crank it just so we can <laughs> ensure success, you know, one of my mottos. <laughs> okay, one more, there we go. And now we're just gonna make the strap. And I'm holding my binding over on the right here to make sure that it doesn't drag and pull down. Okay. Travels like left or right. Ooh, did I just lose the thread? I lost something. Did I? Oh yeah, it's skipping stitches really badly right now. Oh, because the needle is off of the binding over here. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, that's what's going on. We figured it out. If the left needle falls off the edge of the binding, what's probably happening is it's um, because of the looper thread, it's probably doing something like yoinking it over, which puts too much pressure on this thread like happening underneath and then it breaks this thread or it catches it, like it grabs it too much or something, you know? So <clears throat> I think that's key. So keeping it away from this edge so your, your needle's not gonna fall off for the double fold, right? It's working with the N, no VPL visible panning lights. Oh, really? 
He didn't want to remember. <laughs> I love all the varying <laughs> replies. <laughs> yeah, see, this one broke. Um, you know what I found, Blue Magilla, is the um, zigzag works best stretch wise. So I overlock the Pico on and then I zigzag top stitch it. I have underwear that I've cover stitched and I love the look of it. It's easier to do and faster. I have to admit, zigzag works better. As far as stretch. And fold over isn't very stretchy either, but it is great with a cover stitch. Like it's easy to sew on a cover stitch. If you do fold over, I would use a zigzag as well. And it, it I have a d video dedicated to like the best way like we did an experiment. So it is kind of like a, um, you know, I tested everything and that's what I found. So I am the first to be like, I don't want to use my home machine. So that's how you know I'm being honest. <laughs> you hear that? There it went again. Hmm. I just don't really know. I just really don't know, but we can we can do this strap a different way. I think that'll be better than frustra being frustrated over it, you know? I have to cut the thread to get it out. See that? That's little, these little thread pieces are under there. Okay, that's all three. Phew. I think the single fold is less finicky and I think the single fold will be more useful, personally. Night, Sue. Cover stitch machine and binding attachments. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think if you have the right fabric, that would be Nice. I think it would be really comfortable. I can't imagine it being less visible though, Lindsay. I feel like it would be more visible. I just bought two sets of underwear patterns last night because I wanted to try them. And they're by Muna and Broad. I bought the Kapunda undies and I bought the Dulce shorts. This looks a little stretched out too. Do you see that? Let's see. Is it? It's not. It is, it is kind of a hot mess though. <laughs> it is a hot mess. I think what I would probably do to salvage this, I would just cut this whole top off. And then, um, use something else, you know? See ya, Aisha. Yeah, that's what I think. I think that this is not stable enough for the attachment. It's pulling it a little bit, and I think anytime this needle falls off the edge, it's pulling the looper thread because it changes the tension suddenly, right? As soon as you have needle not on four, five layers of fabric anymore, you only have it on one layer of fabric, then that changes the tension drastically. It pulls this under thread. That's, that's what I'm gonna assume. I'm no mechanic, but uh, that's the moment it's happening. Uh, so, I did learn a lot, exactly, Heidi. And I think now that I've at least narrowed down that, that helps, right? I have also learned that I don't have enough thread to match binding. For knits. <laughs> I, and I have a lot of thread. I don't really want to buy more thread. My, my DVD rack back there, like look at that thing. Oops. Oh, behind the dress form. The right hand one's binding and the left is all, that's two columns of thread. That's the biggest DVD rack you can get. <laughs> that's a lot of thread. I don't really want to buy more. It'll be cute though. I mean, you can already tell that it would be really cute. 
And when it's going good, it's going good. It's gonna happen, we're gonna figure it out. There's a chance that a lighter weight fabric would work better, so. I got the binding from the company I bought this from. So the company is <clears throat> Erica's Siskrin in Sweden. Uh, um, Mullen translated it. It means Erica's sewing box. Very affordable. Highly recommend getting the pre-cut binding if you're already going to be paying for shipping to the United States. Yeah, I will figure it out and it will be great. Exactly. Look at this mess over here. <laughs> All right. Sorry. <laughs> I know this fabric, isn't it cute? I love this. It looks like a, like a boyfriend tank or something, you know? Yeah, I'm definitely gonna salvage this. I love this little micro rib. I wonder if they have any more like this in these, it's kind of retro feel. This was Girl Charlie. <laughs> there you go. That's, that works, Lindsay. I could just cover stitch my hem at least, right? <laughs> it's all set up for that. All right, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the plate. By the way, if you order this from them, they sell a plate. So just get it from them. They sell a plate to, to install it. You don't have to get it on eBay like I'm about to, right? So you could then have this and then attach it to the machine. I think I misunderstood what that plate was and that's why I was like, oh, I don't really wanna permanently put this on my cover stitch because I was thinking like my old industrial machine, like that's how it was. It was a big pain. So this sounds a lot easier. Cool, well, I learned a lot. So thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, and we'll keep chipping away at this. So I love the single fold. Single fold is, look at that. It's, it's got so much potential. Where's that really good single fold? I probably threw it away, honestly. There's a lot going on here, so yeah. Oh, you, you, the fold over elastic attachment with the Swiss binder. Yeah, I know it's so affordable. Mine was a hundred. I got two big rolls like this, two wide rolls, three small, low, narrower rolls, two binding attachments, $95. I feel like it's very affordable. $30 for a binding attachment is what you about what you want to spend or less. You don't need to spend more than 30 on a binding attachment. They're they're everywhere. I had a factory once was like, "Oh, okay, you know, and for your binding attachment when I was starting work working with them and they were going to start sewing our stuff, they were like, "Oh, and um the binding attachment's $250." And I was like, "What?" They were like, "Well, we can't find one." I'm like, it was the most frustrating thing dealing with this factory. They were so mansplaining with me and it was so hard. I was constantly trying to like be really gentle and just say, all right, well, have you tried like Google? Like I didn't know how else to say that. And I, I like literally Googled it, sent a leak and, and four pop up right there. I'm like, that's the one. And um, they were like, we were gonna, they were gonna have it made in Vietnam or have to Tennessee attachment make it for $250. I was like, no, just buy this one. It's $30 <laughs> free shipping. So yeah, it's sometimes, man, you got to be there. Google. All right. We got ticky tacky. We got to hold on to this. So, <sighs> all right, cool. You guys, Thanks for coming. Next week, I am cutting and sewing the Amelia Bomber jacket by Wardrobe by Me. And the following live stream week, two weeks after that, is the Kosecha pants by So Liberated. Check those out, they're really cool. If you're in the guild, I have a free guild, so check it out, uh, sosoguild.com. It's free to join. There are paid groups. One of the, the um, 
lowest paid group, the lowest co cost group, <laughs> the lowest cost group, the apprentice group, just got a new benefit called Quick Fit. So monthly I'm gonna fit something and I just proposed to the guild right before I went live. I think what I'm gonna do is compare the fit of a pair of pants to the Coseches before I make them so you can see how I would do that. Cause someone asked in workshop and I was like, well, you can't really use your crotch curve from pattern to pattern. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't translate, but you can use your pair of pants and go, all right, how is this other pattern gonna fit me compared to this? And that's what I'm gonna do, I think. To so that, I'm gonna fit the tuck top I just did. Um, and then they also have access to pattern chatter, which is tomorrow. Yeah, no worries on me. Yeah. The Swiss Binders quality seems better. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. I, the quality of this thing is really nice. I agree, it's very, very nice. So today I looked at the 48 millimeter double fold. That's the one I was using all this blue with. And I did the 35 millimeter single fold. So those are the two I looked at today. So yeah, yeah, so um, let me know in the guild if that's what you guys want. So, and all the journeyists and master group members have access to quick fit as well. So thanks for coming, you guys. I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> see you next week for live streams. Bye.